Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist. Today we're going to be checking out Bohemian Rhapsody, performed by Forestella. Now, I recently covered, not covered, I recently made content for their live performance of Bad Romance. And a lot of the comments were appreciative and positive and blah blah blah. And a lot of the comments were... You need to check out their version of Bohemian Rhapsody, originally by Queen, of course. Uh, so, guys, we're going to dive into this. We're going to break it down. What's happening vocally? What's happening musically? This is an analysis video. That's why analysis is in the title in all caps. That's a warning to people that just want to watch the video straight through. This is not the right channel. I will be pausing a lot to talk about vocal technique, to talk about musicality, to talk about other aspects of artistry. But the link to the full video below will be in the description. Guys, please like this video. Please comment for the algorithm. Super helpful. It can literally just be like, hi, Peter, what's up? And uh, definitely subscribe. There are a lot of people who come to see my channel that come back and back and back again and don't subscribe. Definitely subscribe. Hit the bell. And here's the other catch. Here's the other thing, rather. I make a lot of my income off Patreon. That is how, is one main reason I support myself as a young artist. Please consider, if I am enhancing your listening experience, if you are enjoying the music more because of my commentary, please consider joining my Patreon to show me some love, show me some support for as little as just one, just one dollar a month. All the way up to a hundred dollars a month if you want to get some amazing, crazy, awesome benefits like Patreon happy hour. First one ever happening tomorrow from when I record this video. Anyway, guys, without further ado, let's dive in. This is Forestella taking on the ambitious Bohemian Rhapsody. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a man's life? So very similar so far, except right in that first passage, they had a pause in the singing that's not included in the original. Is this the real life? There, that's not in the original. So they've added that. Now let me see if people are actually singing that or if that is a produced delay. It sounds more like a delay. Is this the real Echo. I think that's a process delay. I don't think it's members of the group singing that. No whip. Down to an E flat too. Yes, so we do have a bass in this group. Now, again, I'm still new to this group. I definitely don't know all the names, but I believe the bass someone mentioned was a legitimate... Um, essentially a basso profundo operatic singer so whenever someone makes a claim like that i get very skeptical but i watched some of his recordings of operatic arias he's phenomenal really excellent operatic technique i would absolutely kill to get on stage with him someday in the professional operatic world that'd be super awesome i hope he can find a time to still do some of that while this is going on but i understand this of course is going to take priority Point being, phenomenal as an opera singer, totally good enough to have a big career as an operatic bass. And I very rarely throw that compliment out. Anyone who's been on this channel before knows that is not a compliment I throw out. So, big props to him. He sounds phenomenal. Uh, anyway, our bass, down to a nice E-flat 2 there. I was waiting for that. That low C, D flat too, or C sharp too, but he went up. Um, <clears throat> all right, so this is not purely vocal, of course. I just heard some strings come in in the background, so <clears throat> we will be paying attention as well to the orchestration of this piece. Look up to the skies and see. That is not in the original too. This C. Um, these change in pitches so i'm often as much as i can i'm going to point out what i remember that's different from the original i find that to be fascinating hopefully you guys do too 
So that's an added chord entirely. Oh. That sounded very Disney, didn't it? So I just want to point out how well they are singing in tune, how well their voices are blending. This is a very difficult thing to do in a big space with a big sound system. Now they do have in-ear mics. So that is what helps performers on big stages, non-operatic stages, but like big, if, you know, if you have a, a, a big rock group performing in an amp like a huge amphitheater or a, a coliseum or something like that they have in-ear mics so that allows them to hear what's happening in real time and allows them to hear how they're blending and how they're balancing with the other voices in real time so so they're not dealing with the you know the mic or the the sound shooting out of a huge amplification system bouncing off the back where everything's super delayed you have to my headphones keep catching on this darn mic you have to have a system like that or good grief or the singers are going to get totally messed up no matter how talented no matter how well they can hear there's nothing you can do <clears throat> the human brain just processes it so if you're hearing a big delay you're it's really hard to counteract that instinct and sing with the delay factored in very difficult so got to have in your mics but regardless they are blending extremely well and they are all singing super well in tune, which is a huge chunk of performing well live. Sing in tune and blend well. You're taking care of a lot of the problems. So I just want to point that out before we continue on. Mama, Pretty. Just kill the man. Hmm. Put a gun against his head. My trigger, now he's dead. Oh, wow. Okay, what I love about this voice, it's this super light octave higher, of course. Whenever he lands on a long note, there's this really fast natural vibrato. Now, something you guys might not know is vibrato speed. Natural vibrato speed is very much, well, natural. There are people that naturally have low vibrato speeds and there are people that have naturally fast vibrato speeds. Now, you can do things to manipulate them. You know, if you put too much pressure on the voice, often the vibrato will get slower. Um, if you allow more air through the vocal folds, often you can speed it up a little bit. But just pay attention to, even with the reverb and all the effects going on to his voice, pay attention to when the vibrato comes in and it's and it's it shimmers. It almost... It doesn't even feel as much like vibrato. It's like the voice is shimmering. Just kill the man. 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 My voice, his vibrato is much naturally faster than mine. So I have to kind of, man, I can't even really do it. Um, but listen to that, listen to that shimmer in the voice. Mama, there too. Just kill the man. Put a gun against his head. My trigger, now he's dead. Beautiful. Mama. Hmm. Life had just begun. But now I've gone and thrown it all away. Hmm. High A flat, A flat four. So we're getting, you know, it's it's not super high for a tenor up in their high chest range, but it's it's Beyond middle voice, it is getting up there. So in tune. Like, that is something... Having gone through so much music and musical performance and performing in chamber choirs and operas and acapella groups and as a country like just a singer being really well in tune 
is so powerful and everyone gets it. People that don't know much about singing or music or anything, you can tell if someone's really badly out of tune or if someone's really singing well in tune. And you can tell that the voices balance nicely. They're really doing an excellent job. As if nothing really matters. Nothing really matters. Down to an A flat too. Mm. My time has gone Sun shivers down my spine But it's aching all the time Isn't it amazing? Two things. It's amazing how much drums affect the whole mood. It's like, at first it's just all kind of like atmospheric and a little bit amorphous, right? Feeling these things out. And then it goes... And then it's like, all right, now we got some structure that we can you play within the confounds of. Um, you see this singer here? How he, what he did is he just touched his ear. He was checking his in-ear mic and probably pushing it a little bit deeper to hear himself a little more clearly. You'll see singers do that a lot, singing live or singing in the studio. They do this. They're just trying to hear themselves a little bit better. My spine, Ooh. Okay, up to B flat four. Now we are really getting up into high tenor chest range. Leave it all behind. Gorgeous. And I love the little bit of grit he put in there. Leave it all behind. And a place to Mama. So there are, of course, there are added harmonies that are different from the original. Now, there was no bass in Queen, as far as I know. So already that is going to change the dynamic here because we straight up have a lower voice part. And so there can be lower harmonies than we heard in the original. I don't know. I, I know there are a lot of harmonies in the original. But I also think it's a lot of... In my head, I have it as a lot of Freddie Mercury being the solo without a lot of background harmony happening until we get into like the this crazy section in the middle but truth be told i'm not totally sure so i'm not going to make a claim about that point being they've got an extra voice on the bottom and there are a lot of vocal harmonies happening beep boop pop <laughs> This is the original solo. That is the original solo. Oh, and the classic. I see a little silhouette of a man. So first of all, we got, I think this is our operatic bass who starts us off here. And this section is very operatic. Queen, Freddie Mercury himself got huge, huge, huge influence by opera, uh, from opera. I see a little silhouette of a man. Up to a D4 there. A little Hi, hey. Ooh, I can I can't usually squeal up that eye. I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him his life from this monster city. They're doing a great job. This is obviously a super tricky part, and maybe even trickier than for the singers is the band having to do all these insane key tempo, all these wild changes on a dime 
where everything's changing fast, the the chords are changing fast, the keys even, I think, move around a little bit during this section. Um, it is a group effort, and everyone's got to be so on, because this part can be an absolute shit show <laughs> if everyone's not nailing their parts. Or more checking their ear. That's high for bass. No, no. It's completely blowing out my microphone for sure. But that's what our that's what our boy our bass is doing up there. Let me go. I like that little mama little growl in there. Here we go. Yeah. A B flat five with full freedom. I mean that like maintain the vibrato, really great vocal. Is this the guy that was a countertenor? Like a prof or a, a trained countertenor? Because those are some absolutely crazy. This is like this is like Dimash stuff here. Easy. Easy. So you think you can solve me as being God, it's such a good song. Oh my god. One of the one of the great rock songs of history. And they really are doing a fantastic job. This is a lot of fun. So you think you can love me and leave me to die? Yes. Oh yeah. Die. Look at that fall off. Think you can love me and leave me to die. So it feels it seems like we have like two high tenors, more of a baritone or bari tenor, and then we have our bass. Is that about right for this group? You can hear all their timbres pretty clearly. All these poor people are have they have to sit down during this. I'd be on my feet, baby. I don't think those oohs were in the original song. Nice. So they stacked that chord going back up. Da pa pa pa. Whatever it was, some kind of arpeggio. original i of course don't know what happens here but how it goes from this in this complete cheeky with the mad lads just going absolutely bananas back into this like again back into this kind of atmospheric ponderous state I like how long they made us wait there. Nothing really matters. Anyone can see. That's bass baritone. Tenor number one. Nothing really Tenor number two. Oh, in 
Interesting. I was sure they were going to hold a chord together at the end. Oh, oh! Really, really excellent. I think this last chord, it was a... Was it a five chord? Ooh, that's our two. What key are we in? So we had an F. Wait a second. Yeah, so I think I think the song maybe it's in B flat and then they went to a five. B flat major. And the on the five chord, unresolved. Damn. Damn, y'all. Definitely a big fan of Forestella. Um, I enjoyed their Bad Romance. I thought it was a great performance, especially. This really showed off what they can do vocally. A, we have an operatic bass, which of course I'm totally not biased towards, <laughs> who, is, who can clearly jump, between, who's trans-genre, awesome. Um, much respect there. God, I would love to chat. Love a chat with this guy. The conversations we could have would be sick. Um, two amazing tenors. One with a absolutely freakish falsetto and head voice. Maybe that's the trained countertenor. Uh, more of a baritone who we haven't heard. I haven't heard as much from. He didn't have as much solo stuff today, I don't think. But a, an absolutely killer ensemble and so much musicality. And again, guys, staying in tune, singing that well in tune. Even with the in-ear mics in a big setting like that is very difficult. So, like, huge props to them. This group has immense talent. Um, I hope you guys... Oh, look at that. My battery will sleep unless plugged into a power outlet soon. Anyway, I am going to wrap it up anyway. So, guys, if you enjoyed this analysis, if I helped bring more joy and bring some education and fun to your listening experience please do consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month with some wonderful benefits going up through all the six tiers. Uh, link is in the description below. So it cannot hurt to go check it out to see what I'm offering. So follow that link, check out what all the tiers do, but definitely like the video, comment for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel. That's a big help. And uh, I've already plugged everything else. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoy this analysis. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.